so let's let's call a meeting to order the first order of business is an executive session so anyone who is not on the select board other than sarah should do you want to could you do you want to consider inviting uh, dorinda uh, you have to invite both me and dorinda okay i i agree with that but how do we, can you put other people in the waiting room and then bring them back as soon as the executive session is over? I don't want to keep, if I, I'm afraid if I remove them, I re remove them forever. So Bill, Bill McManus, if you could possibly just uh, log out and then can, we'll log back in again. I, I can leave and come back in at yeah. uh, you just go back and I'll time. Put, I'll put you in the waiting room. Uh, Charlene, okay. Bill, uh, that's got to be Eric. Can you... Uh, I'm just going to put him, I'm just going to put these people in the waiting room. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sandy, I'm going to put her in the waiting room. You need to put more. I wish I could run my household this way. It would be okay, out of executive session at 529. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. I want to start uh, the recording, Sarah. Thank you for the reminder. I always yeah. forget. Okay, I saw the little red light come on. Um, so who would like to make that motion, Liz? So we're making the motion to do the job offering. That's what this yeah. is? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so I, I move that we um, offer the job of road foreman for Middlesex to Shane Ricky. And uh, um, contingent upon um, the salary that Liz and Peter have discussed with him, um, and his hire would be effective January fourth. Is there something else I need to say? I'll second. I think that's I think that's fine for the motion. Um, Steve, maybe Steve has something he wants to say. Well, let's let's get through this. First. Well, I think we should say it before the vote. No. Okay. No, I'm all set, and I will recuse myself from voting. Okay. Okay. So, so with that, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And Steve, Steve recused himself. Uh, any opposed? No. Okay, we're 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 on the path. Uh, thank you, everybody, and thank you for your uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, so we are now moving right along to our workshop. Mm. We have two other things first. Yeah, we have two other things first. Oh, you, I do. I did send it in. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was. So first of all, we're supposed to consider and act upon the Middlesex Planning Commission's recommendation that Kevin Thompson be appointed zoning administrator for a three-year term. Is there a motion? So uh, I wanted to hear from Sandy because I don't know anything about Kevin Thompson. Is Sandy back on? Isn't that position, he'd be filling that position to finish out a term, correct? No, that term that term expired in this over the summer. It's oh yeah, okay, I remember, right, yep. So is Sandy back on? Not yet. Sandy's not, she's not around. She was just here what a minute. I would, what I would tell you, Mary, is, is Kevin, Kevin is, is- Kevin is on. Kevin's Maybe on. he can speak for himself. <laughs> well, that's even better. I'll have to unmute him. I'll ask him to unmute himself. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Yeah. Hello, okay. everybody. Hi, Kevin. So Mary, Mary Skinner does not know you. She would like to know a little bit about you. Oh, uh, let's see. Any questions, Mary. I, you know, I, I don't have, I just, tell us why you want to be the zoning administrator, Kevin. Um, I'm 
couple of reasons. One, um, I'm finding myself in a position where I've got time. Uh, it'd be kind of nice to, to serve the community some. And uh, I'm also looking for another part-time job. Okay. So, so you, have you done anything like this zoning administrator job or? I, I have been a carpenter contractor uh, in the area here for the last 30 years since I've been living in Middlesex. Um, I have been the last 20 years worked as a tax pro at H&R Block. Um, I have been involved in different farmers markets uh, in the area, helping set one up in Barrie many years ago, been on the boards of the markets in, um, in Montpelier. Um, and have dealt with local governments through, uh, through, through the farmers markets. Um, and it, you know, it, the position looked interesting and uh, I put my name in. Any other questions for Kevin, anybody? So, can I just ask one more question? Kevin, in, the con in your capacity as a carpenter and a contractor, have you had to deal with the Middlesex zoning regulations at all? I have, um, usually I will send the, the, the owner um, and I have dealt with them myself for our own place. So you're somewhat familiar with them? Yes. No, I don't have any other questions. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, since Sandy's not here, I just want to tell you that the Sandy said it was a really it was a tough decision, but the uh, planning commission was very enthusiastic about Kevin, and they uh, in, unanimously appointed him. So, um, recommend. I, I I can echo that. Just being on the planning commission, we had, there were two really good candidates, and we um, I think we struggled to decide which, but Kevin clearly showed having prepped like read through the the um the zoning regulations of but that for me was sort of the factor thank you and i think also i know kevin from the days of the fall harvest dinner way back when <laughs> and uh and you know i can attest that he you know would be good with working with the community and you know he owned highland gardens i don't know if you know that mary oh uh, i did that. So he, so he has, you know, he's met, he knows a lot of the community and I think that he'd be, he'd be a good representation um, and, a, and a reasonable person to work with if you were working with zoning. Great. I would Great. also say I've, I've known Kevin for a long time. He was a, a loyal parent to members of the U32 uh, Alpine ski team back in the day. Oh, wow. Gosh. Accolade. Ears are ringing, right? <laughs> yeah. So with that, all in favor of appointing Kevin to be our Still made the motion. Who seconded? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Kevin, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Still made it and Mary seconded it. Okay. That's what I was wondering. All right. Okay. So we're all we're all good. Welcome, Kevin. Oh, thanks. Welcome. <laughs> okay, I, was I just... would I would just just quickly, and we're we're running behind, but I would encourage you to take uh, first of all take some time looking over the zoning regulations, which you already have. But uh, the League of Cities and Towns has has trainings, and I would encourage you to do that. Take advantage of that. We pay the yes. Cost. That was that was something that we did discuss with the Planning Commission, and um, that was one resource that's available and also mitch has said that he's he will be available to you know in this transfer so okay perfect thank you so moving Can right I just one thing uh, kevin um one of the things is when there's an appeal and this didn't really work as well as we had hoped the person who's the zoning administrator should be telling the board um why they did or didn't do something so you kind of have to be a person who's capable of saying i issued the decision i didn't uh, i didn't do it and th these are the reasons why because it seems like uh from what we've heard that that there really was kind of like no preparation for the board to hear 
appeals from your decisions. Did they tell you about that at the planning commission? Uh, no. Okay. But that's that's one of those things that seems kind of obvious. I mean, if I was applying for something and and was denied, I'd want to know why. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, there are people that you can talk to about no, that. I I was going to say that, uh, Kevin, I, ch I chair the ZBA, and it probably would be good for you and I to have a discussion someday just to talk about, uh, about process and um, kind of just get started along that, that track. So yeah. um, I'll good. either try to call you or you call me and we'll figure out a uh, you know, chance to chat. Great. Good idea. Thank you. Okay, Great. So moving right along to consider and act upon E911 coordinator to replace outgoing E911 coordinator, Mitch Osecki, action possible. Sarah? Um, I'm gonna ask that we pass on this because I'd like to be able to talk to Kevin and see if he might wanna do this. It's something that the zoning administrator, it's good for the zoning administrator to do, but it also would be good for uh, Dave Smith to do because he, uh, my hope is that Dave will work with Kevin uh, just because we'll be getting documents here and we just need, they, those two need to work it out. So maybe you could just, I don't think there can be any E911 addresses in the next two weeks, but you never know because this place is exploding. So okay. what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, that, that real estate is selling every, every piece of land in Middlesex is selling like mad right now. Well, the Appel property isn't. What? I don't think the Appel property is, is it? Yes, it is. It is? Yes. For how much? Well, I don't know, but we can talk about that some other time. <laughs> well, and also I heard that the, um, the Christensen property was selling. Okay, guys. Yeah, let's move yeah. on. Let's stay on, let's stay on track. If wow. anybody wants to have a discussion with uh, Sarah at another time, that would be fine and appropriate. Um, so we're passing over the E911 coordinator. So then considering whether to implement provisions under Act 162, which permits any municipality the ability to apply the Australian ballot system to any and all municipal meetings held in the year 2021 by vote of its legislative body action possible. We've already talked about this. We decided to wait and see what was gonna happen over the next uh, short period of time and I'm not aware that really anything is happening. I know there's a lot going on in the background, but uh, not a lot is happening. There's talk of a uh, special legislative session. I don't know where that stands. There's talk of the governor making decisions by executive order. I don't know where that stands. I do think, I do think, and, and Sarah, please, please jump in that without any putting any undue pressure on our administrative staff, we could put this off for another two weeks and see yep. what happens, if anything. We're, we're, we're all, we're, we're preparing for every contingency. What Do is- Do you know if other towns, what other towns have done yet or not? Uh, I think a lot of them are still are waiting and seeing, but a lot of them are just going forward with ballots. That's, that's what I would recommend that we just move forward and do the ballot thing this year and get on a path that we know where we're headed and, and go for that for this next year. Then at least we know where we're headed. Yep. Well, it certainly, it certainly doesn't seem, and I think you all got uh, copied on that email uh, about the possibility of, of postponing the meeting that the schools definitely aren't going to go for that. So what would mean yeah, would have to right. have two meetings, two votes, two. So it doesn't seem like that's a viable option. I, I can support either thing. I don't mind, I don't mind waiting two weeks and I don't mind making the decision right now if people feel that way. I'd also just need to point out to you that we will have same in-person voting just as we always do. So if you're going to hold it outside in May, I'm going to have to be outside in May someplace where town meeting is to hold in-person voting all day long. I mean, it's not-, it's not No, Australian ballot. <laughs> no, I mean, what Peter is saying is the May meeting isn't feasible because the town, the school board won't, won't agree with that. So that's off the table. 
it's a question of whether we vote now or wait to see what's happening about doing Australian ballots in, in March. Well, well hold on. Isn't the Australian ballot always an Australian ballot for the school budget anyway? So we're talking yeah. about having two or just one? Well, you would know you would have normally we have two ballots. We have a town ballot for town officers and we have a school ballot for school officers and budget questions, et cetera. And the school and nothing's going to change. That's still the same. So I all they're going to do is have an informational meeting, which is what you will have to have if you have go by, by ballots. What I'm telling you is that if you if you have if you move this to May outside under an umbrella or an, an, a tent, your vote, your staff is going to have to be outside wherever town meeting is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. that day. So it's not just meeting for a couple of hours under a tent. It, for the rest of us, it's 12 hours outside, and we have no idea what that weather. Right. But but the, I just want to ask this question: um, You couldn't have it be where um, only the so everything else is on the ballot like it always is. Isn't the only and but you have the voting on the regular town meeting day. You have you have your Australian ballot on regular town meeting except for the town portion. Right. The problem is the location. So in other words, if you go with a ballot that votes for everything, like a total warning, just exactly what the legislature has allowed, we would have a early voting, just like everybody is used to, that would be able to vote for everything on an absentee or early ballot. And secondly, for those who wanted to vote in person, we would have the same setup we had for the primary in August and for the November general election. We'd have two or three voting booths here. People would come and vote. The problem is that voting has always been, it would be very confusing to have voting on a ballot one place and then town meeting held, you know, underneath a tent someplace else. You could probably do it, but it, it's, yeah. not the, it's, not, it's not It's not. Middlesex's history to do that. So it sounds like a lot more work to have, because regardless, the school budget has to be on on town meeting day, on normal town meeting day, right? I believe so. And the school budget is going to be voted by ballot regardless. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep mentioning this May meeting? Because Liz, because uh, that was what uh, uh, Susan Clark kept bringing up last week was she saying maybe we could move the meeting to May, the town meeting to May, and we could gather under a tent. Yeah. And I really, I just, from, um, a, from a town my, court, that's a nightmare. Yeah. My suggestion was that we just do our Australian ballot. We have here the people that want to vote, like you just said, they will come on the town meeting day, the regular day of our town meeting. They can vote there if they want, but most people would probably do it uh, by mail-in, you know, absentee ballots. And we'd have our informational meeting prior to that or, or however we do that. Yeah. But then everything is taken care of, not a meeting in May. I'm not for that anyway. So the only other, other piece to this, which is unknown at this point in time, um, and I actually had the opportunity to hear uh, a represent an election representative from the Secretary of State's office talk about this, and he was asked directly whether the whether the state was going to pick up the cost of mailing out ballots to everybody, or if they would in fact mail out the ballots, and that's undetermined. So I think we have to presume that it's very likely that we're going to have to mail out the ballots at our expense, which is well. I mean, to all fairness, we would do that anyway. We just don't, the idea of, we wouldn't mail everybody a ballot because that was a one-time thing that happened in November. And that was not something that we normally do. As I said at the last meeting, the March town meeting is a very, very popular time for people to vote early because they're going on vacation, kids are off school. So we do, we're used to that. And that's, that's not gonna be that big of a deal. So, so sorry. No. Just to be clear, you're not, you are not in favor of mailing ballots out to everybody. You're in fact, you're saying that people are going to have to request ballots. I am not in favor of mailing ballots out to everybody. And I don't see why we would mail ballots out to everyone right. here. We have, we didn't do that for the primary. Uh, we, people requested ballots in August, for the August primary and we mailed them out. People are used to requesting for town meeting ballot requesting town meeting ballots and we mail them out. That's the way we've always done it. The weird thing was the secretary of state's office mailing out 
for the presidential for, for the presidential primary, and that was because it was a state election. I mean, it was there were no local offices except for JPs on there. It was a state election, so that's why. So, can I just say that I would say I would prefer to hold it off for two weeks because I think that you know, with respect um, to Susan Clark, I don't think she. Um, is under the impression that we're just going to vote on this tonight because I think that she's, you know, had been, you know, with this idea that she was going to be collecting as much information so that we could be as informed as possible um, before we make a decision. Um, so I, I would personally like to hold off for two weeks because I think that if we voted today, I mean, I'm, I'm of the mindset of voting to, to, to actually, you know, um, to have it all be Australian for this year. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I, I, I think it's sort of unfair to Susan who doesn't think that's going to happen tonight, even though it's on the, I know it's on our agenda. Um, but I think that she's of the mindset that we're still collecting information and that something, you know, could change. So that's my recommendation is that we wait for the next meeting if we can, before we vote on this. Sounds reasonable. I feel the same way. I think we're headed down the path of Australian ballot, but just in case something weird happens in the next two weeks, yeah. it doesn't hurt and us. And so we'll make sure that Susan knows we're going to vote on it next time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with that too. Okay. So, do we have anything else to say on that subject tonight? Okay. So now we are ready for now our budget we're discussion. And we're not quite back on schedule, but we're more back on schedule. So thank you, everybody. So um, budgets for the town office, listers, rec committee, zoning, and Middlesex Cemetery. So we received, we received, we received a couple of things. We received a complete budget from Dorinda, thank you, Dorinda, which shows uh, the town office budget. Uh, it does not show the rec committee or the zoning. We have separate separate uh, documents for them. No, that, I included those in those numbers, but I would skip over the town stuff and maybe start with, um, I think the listers are on here, so maybe let them present sitting in there attending and then we can go over what was because even with the recreation and the zoning budget there was a lot of stuff not included on those budgets that need to be discussed well that's fine and as, as a courtesy to those who are going to present those budgets that makes that makes sense to me so is there someone uh ready to talk about the recreation mitch is not here right no so we have his we have his budget. I did not compare it to I will right now. Well, don't you think we should talk to Eric, who is here on the listers as as uh Listen, Eric, I, I don't care how we do it. Let's just do it. If if you want to set how we go through this, let's do the listers first. That's fine. Well, and that's what Dorinda recommended. And Eric is here. All right. Guys. All right. Dorinda recommends we do the listers first. We will do the listers first. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to manage this whole process. Apparently, I'm not doing very well. So, can listers. someone remind me what what document we're looking at? Because I'm looking at like five different emails that have come in. The listers are going to present. The numbers are all in the spreadsheet that I sent, okay. and I believe if you have any questions, the listers are on here to explain their portion of what they're asking for, if you have questions or if they just want to present it. And then, so then the we can six, go- you, that attachment with the, everything? Right, yeah. And all of their items are under administration. Right. Okay. So they are- They're kind of all mixed in. You have lister wages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does 
does Amy or Eric want to speak to this or do you want me to do it? I'm here. Can you hear me? This yep. is Amy. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. I didn't see you. That's right. My picture is not up because I called in. So, gotcha. um, <clears throat> so essentially the budget that we've presented to you and Eric is on here too, in case you have questions for us. Um, the budget that we're presenting to you is pretty much a cookie cutter of last year. And the only exception is that we've reduced uh, two areas and um, rounded another one up a little bit. So really the difference change is less than a half a percent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, we had expected, uh, I think everyone expected this year to be different. <laughs> Nobody expected COVID. Um, but we had anticipated that we would be in the throes of um, working to make sure the grand list was in uh, tip top shape to be ported over to the state's new grand list software. They have been slowed down on their process. And so our understanding is that their transition date is also pushed off. Um, we don't have a definite date from them yet, but we're presuming it's about a year. Everything seems to be about a year pushed off. Um, so what was expected to start next July, we're expecting to start instead a year from July, um, which is when we will be moving from the Nimric grand list software that we've worked with for years and years and years, certainly long before I came on board, um, and moving to an entirely new uh, cloud-based system that has a lot of um, pieces to it, including a GIS aspect and parcel mapping and a lot of the things that we currently pay for as pieces of um, different types of software that we subscribe to as at the town level. Um, will be available through this integrated software that the state is purchasing. Um, the grand list piece is the part that, that, they, um, that they pay for uh, and then towns could buy into different chunks of the rest. Um, but anyway, the gist is this. This year we expected we would have by now spent at least, you know, maybe 40% of our wage budget, but we haven't. Um, we've only actually spent this year so far to date less than $3,000 in wages. Um, so essentially, there's going to be quite a bit of savings this year in, in the budget that we had in place now. Um, and next year, we're proposing the same budget um, and certainly not expecting that we would go over. So the work that is, was expected to happen this year, in fact, you know, will be happening more in the spring going forward. Thank you, Amy. Questions, anybody? Sure. Uh, Amy, it's Phil. Do, do, you, um, Hi, Phil. do you know by any chance what the state, what the program name is that they settled on? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. We had a, um, you know, a, an online meeting with the PVR pool. It was probably end of September, 1st of October, maybe, yeah. um, where they gave us a demo rollout. And it's really some cool, slick stuff. It's from a company that is based in New Hampshire, and New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire, actually utilizes this software um, yeah. for their parcel mapping and, and what is the equivalent of their lister system, their grand list system. Okay. Um, so one of the things that is, I can tell you, one of the things they did highlight in the meeting that we went to, the online meeting, um, was that there was some mention that the state may be taking over the tax billing at some point in the future, which, uh, you know, would be, certainly be interesting. <laughs> so, If you think of the name or find it, shoot me an email, please. It's Axiomatic Software. Oh, Axi is it Axiomatic? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Any other questions for Amy? Okay, thank you, Amy. All right, good. All right, thanks. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, y'all. Have a great night. Okay, see you. Uh, thank good you. news about this year's budget. Okay, so rec committee, we have uh, we have Mitch's. 
budget request here. And it's the same as last year's, I think. Well, Let's leave it as exactly the same as last year. Well, and that's the problem when you plug in the numbers, it doesn't add up, right? <laughs> so the problem, first of all, you start with labor and he's already making over $20 an hour. So it, he just, I mean, I think he took last year's and just kind of put it out there. So that number becomes an, an incorrect number. Um, so that's actually costing you by the time you get the wages in there and the taxes and all you're up over six thousand yeah. dollars where he's budgeted five um, and then he did not in his budget under recreation there's also Wrightsville beach dues I have no idea if that I didn't plug in a number on that I don't know if it's going to be the same or what's going to happen so I left that blank. Um, let's see, the other number was, uh, let's see, the clerk's mowing, that falls on, for the clerk's office, that's under the town hall budget really, under their um, maintenance. So that doesn't really fall under the recreation budget. Uh, so if you total up the um, recreation field mowing and the three mile bridge row mowing, that comes to $3,580. Um, $3, and uh, so I plugged that number in there. And um, the rest is, the rest is in there. So it's a little bit different than that 13,480 number. That's like 14,453, is that what I'm looking at? Well, that's without Wrightsville Beach. And Wrightsville Beach if you plug right around $2,700. 2,750, so if you plug that in, it would come out to 17,203. And last year it was 17,000. 589. Yeah. Okay. So it's Thanks. actually a little less. It's a little less, but I think it's how the numbers are distributed. Uh-huh. Hey, Dorinda, was that 17,000 numbers? Is that for the recreation or is that for the listers or both? That's recreation. We're on to recreation. 17203 right now. Well, can you give me the listers number? Because I, I, I the lister numbers are all over the place that you have to. We'll have to take them out of the line I items. Number um, the zoning, huh? I, I mean the zoning. I don't have. I can't. Oh, give we you. haven't done zoning yet. Uh, we're going to do zoning now. So again, the zoning is um, the hourly rate is wrong in there. And um, he's put in, uh, let's see. So then I added in the taxes and all of that, which brought that up. Um, mileage and expenses um, is not listed on here, but yet last year he incurred $61 there, which, so I think there should be a number in there. Um, advertising is not listed on here, which we certainly do some advertising. Uh, legal um, zoning and enforcement for legal, that is not on this. So those are all holes in the bucket. I don't know what numbers I should be plugging in here. Um, well, if you want me to just do what we did last year or? So I would recommend we plug in we plug in $100 for mileage at least, if not 150 Advertising, I don't know. We haven't, we haven't spent any in a while. I guess I'd leave that alone. We spent $48 this last year. Yeah, I understand, but I'm just saying, I don't know. How does everybody else feel? You want to plug in 50 bucks? Sure. Uh, Legal enforcement. What did we do this year? 
It ended at $2,140. And what do you remember what that was for, Dorinda? Uh, there was a lot of issues, I think, there that I think ones you were still recently working on. Gotcha. Yeah, we better plug in a couple of thousand dollars. I, I think there's some stuff bubbling around out in the, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, at least 2,000. And then courses and seminars. Um, Again, he has training and conferences at 250 with a new person coming on. I don't know if that's a good number or. Well, what do those conferences typically cost? $120 or $150 plus a little mileage? I have no idea what the individual okay. ones are. Why don't we just double it? Yeah, 500. Yeah. yeah. 500? Yeah, because that way, you know, Takes twice as many things. Okay, we, so your your new number is ten thousand five thirty three. Uh, we possibly should put some postage in there because um, we kind of decided that when there are appeals, especially where there are denials, that we send those letters certified. Um, and I think that's where the $61 under mileage and expenses may have come oh. from. That might have been postage. Um, okay. But so we have 150 in there. Good. 150 move it up. Okay. Okay. Well, don't we have the, the Riceville on a separate line, 223? It's in the, it's under the recreation. Yeah, right. Okay, so he had So I just plugged in the 2750. We don't have a number that's any right. different. I mean, again, remember, this is a budget. So when we get to, when we get to small, I mean, I don't think that, rec that, that is going to change dramatically. It shouldn't. So are we all set with that? So we're all set with that. So, so my, my suggestion is that we, just so we can sort of tell what we are, and I did this manually before we made these other changes, but I think we should plug in, I don't know, what do you think, Dorinda, 19,500 for county tax? Um. Wait, where? What line are you? You're back up on, back on page one. Back on yeah. general government. I'm trying to I'm trying to fill in the the items that are blank, which are the items that are red. Oh yeah, yeah. right. They right. always take yeah. so long to do that, don't they? Um, Central Vermont solid waste. I don't know if you want to go to like eighteen hundred on it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a little, give us a little wiggle room. Okay. Um, then we now get we... equipment repair and equipment purchase. Do we have, do we have any sense, Sarah, of what we're, I mean, we can, we should plug in them some number for repair, but that purchase is basically all computer stuff, right? That was all those, all the laptops that were purchased. Um, yes. Right. We shouldn't have any expense in that category for the, at least the next couple of years. Um, I'm trying to think. We are probably a couple of years out. We're going to run into making some decisions about what we do with our server and possibly even think about do we continue to run a server or do we move to a cloud-based service. But right now, everything there is fine. So I... You know, I don't. I don't see anything uh, I mean, wrong, but we should have some thousand dollars in case a hard drive goes yeah. down, or yeah, I mean, something's going to break. Yep. So I recommend to... we plug in a thousand dollars under or repair or under purchase. Repair. Repair. And nothing for purchase. 
Um, yeah, let's let's maybe put another thousand in there just to for a cushion. Right. I yeah, think something so. something goes some, down. Some router. Some something. Yeah. yeah. And then we're down to uh, computer maintenance. Okay, so there's an interesting number. Um, so I looked at some bills and um, so just what we're paying um, for uh, God, our, what's, yeah, yeah, it's eight thousand dollars. Okay. We then we're, we're paying another forty two hundred dollars for support for the land records. We're paying another five thousand dollars to Nemric for their general computer support, and then we pay another two thousand dollars to Nemric for a disaster recovery fee, which that covers all the listers programs, I guess, that yep. are separate, like the camera and stuff like that. Yep. So all said and done, just doing the support services we have in place at this point, it, you're looking at $19,000. Well, that's what it costs if that's what we still put in. So, so what have we added that we didn't have last year? We added more computers. Um, we added, Nemric went up on their charges. Yeah. And we also, when we contact them for any kind of support, anything over a 10 minute phone call, you pay for. Right. Well, I, I think if it's 19,000, it's 19,000. I don't think we're we need more than that, Phil, do you think? What else gets thrown in there? I I don't know. Off the top of my head, I can't I can't think of anything. Um, you know, unless we had a major hack like UVM Medical Center did, then we <laughs> uh, then we'd all be in trouble. But um, we're probably okay there. The um, the thing that's interesting in terms of what Amy was saying with the state moving to this other system, possibly in another year. And the reason I asked for what's the software company is it may make some sense for us to see if there are other modules to get away from NEMREC for the financial management so that we align with what the state's doing. Um, I mean, we don't know what the cost is going to be, but the NEMREC stuff seems to really be, be adding up as far as all these different fees with them for, um, but that's not going to happen immediately. We can look at that down the road, but I don't know. I think let's, let's stay with the 19, whatever. Okay. Again, we're going to have another chance to take a look at this in, uh, in January. Another yeah. Well, and also maybe Amy will get back to to uh, Sarah with uh, the program, and then you know you might get that information and can take a look. Well, Sarah gave me the name of the software, so I will uh, I'll do a little uh, looking around. So I think Thanks. the only other item which we haven't plugged anything in for major item is Montpelier ambulance. Yeah, and are we? Were we in like a three-year contract? Is this the end of our contract? Or they do I don't know the, that. That might be. That sounds familiar. Is well, this the year? Number right now. Let's just put in that same number. That okay. I'll go downstairs and look at the contract. Like, yeah, like forty-five thousand dollars, right? No, uh, sixty-seven thousand. Um, okay. So with all of that, Dorinda, <laughs> I'm holding, I'm holding my hand tight and pressing my foot against the floor. What's the <laughs> down budget number as it stands right now? Mm -hmm. 
Before the special articles? Yes. Before special articles. I have um, $1,322,075, which is lower. <laughs> One it's, all, it's, it's like a break even almost wow. 0.14 but I think you know and here a lot of it that we have to discuss is will there be more training like for the accounting side of it that you know we really didn't account for any of that and the wages are going to play into that um, again this is only a two percent placeholder across the board the big missing, the big, the big missing piece of this is hiring a financial manager person, whatever we do with that. And I don't know how we, I, I guess what I'm thinking is we got to give a lot of thought to that between now and January, because that's a real number by the time you plug in, yep. by the time you talk, talk to a 32 hour a week person, which I think is what we're talking about, and benefit likely benefits and all the other stuff, that's going to be a real number. This, this as it sits, seems manageable. I think that the two big questions are: is the uh, is the two percent raise enough? Do we want to do differential raises between? different jobs in different departments, all the things we talked about last week. Um, and I'm not sure we're going to get totally through that project by the time we do it. But if, if we have decided that we're, we're proposing to hire this financial person, we've certainly got to put a bunch of money in there to support that. Right, because that's going to not only affect just the wage side, you have all the benefits that because they then will be eligible for municipal retirement, everything if it is a full-time job. Yeah. What would you think we'd have to put in? Somewhere about 80, 90 thousand? Mm. I mean, so, I don't. So here's here's my concern, and this, this gets back to the whole discussion. When you look at what we currently pay, our people, meaning the town clerk, the road crew, the select board assistant, the listers, the treasurer, everybody, all of a sudden we, we throw $90,000 in there for, for a brand new position. That completely throws everything else golly wonkas. Yeah, it does. But you also really, have to look- It's gonna cause you know bad feelings and, and upset and something. So somehow, Somehow we've got to work, and maybe uh, maybe what we do, Dorinda, is you and you and Sarah and I try and put our heads together and come up with something that we can plug in there and just see what it looks like. I I don't know how else to do it. I mean, we I have I have no idea. Did you look at the spreadsheet that I sent you for um, the different departments and how they're paid and how many hours? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a sad situation when the recreation person is getting more hours a week than the treasurer's position. <laughs> and, That's you sick. know, so, I mean, I don't think there's a big explanation there. You know, you there's a big problem here that this is one of your most important departments. And I think that and maybe it's restructuring the job positions. Maybe you can pull something from one person, decrease those hours on that person. And I don't know, that's, you know, that's in your guys' ballpark. I'm willing to sit in and give you my ideas, but that's why I did that. And I also included the, you know, statutory requirements of each position as well. Yeah, that when, was really helpful. What, when did you send that? I, I'm just go ahead. last last week. Okay, I haven't. I I didn't download that, so it's my my bad. I guess um, what I'm suggesting is that we, and I I don't necessarily have to be on it, but Dorinda certainly needs to be on it, and Sarah needs to be in on it, and somebody from the select board needs to be in on it. Put together a proposal because there are too many. I mean, you're exactly right, Dorinda. There are just too many moving parts to this. 
I mean, we can't just say we're going to throw this much money into hiring that person. That's just going to create yeah. absolute chaos. So we've got to look at, you know, exactly what Dorinda put out on that spreadsheet and figure out the moving parts of that. Does it make any sense to subcontract out parts of that? Um, payroll, I mean, payroll's not huge as far as the number of people that we pay. And I don't know, how, how many hours a week or every two weeks do we we have, do, do we put into doing processing payroll? I don't think it's a lot. I mean, Amy does it and you're looking at the whole accounting being done in, um, what did I tell you? It's like, I think she gets 12 hours and I'm for four. So 16 hours a week. So it can't, be, and that's doing everything. And that's spread out over the whole year, of course. Yeah. Um, but as a good example that just came up this week is Nevermick offered to do our W-2s and 1099s for $9.95 a, per, a person, which doesn't sound too bad, but it's a $300, 300 plus. It, we figured it out based on what we do. It was going to cost us a little over $300 to do it. In my mind, somebody sitting in that chair can do it for a lot less than three hundred dollars. Well, but the numbers come right out of our computer system. That's that was my take on it, and I just you know, so I, I, I think if you subcontract it out, you may end up at the same price tag, right. yeah, and not have as much control over the situation. Right. Well, and as we discussed, at some of these other functions, the grant management process and that's that's a big one the yeah. grants are big yep well people out there that are um that want to do this job if we go to all the trouble to put it out i mean I, what kind of person and what kind of background do they have to have to want to have this job well, I sent, I sent a variety of different positions that were advertised. If you just Google finance, municipal financial people, and there's all different types. You have financial managers, you have financial directors, you have, you have to compare yourself to the size town that you're, you know, mm -hmm. doing it with. And, you know, but I gave you like a half a dozen examples of what these other municipalities were right. looking for. There was one that was a closer match. Um, I think it was Hinesburg or somebody. Or Underhill or. Or something like that, yeah. Yeah, that I thought was a fairly good match to what we were doing. And I'll never be able to find it right now. I don't have enough bandwidth to be on Zoom and open a. I yeah, know. So I'm looking at I it for it. Opened up on my tiny little hand thing, and I can't. I can't get everything I need to be any That's, help. We're not going to get there tonight anyway. No. On this. No. no. There was Brattleboro. There was uh, Williston Underhill. Underhill. They had yeah. a population of three thousand and forty people. Yeah. And um. So, and their salary range was between 22 and 28 per hour. Yeah. Yeah, see, that doesn't, that doesn't sound bad, but. That sounds like what Amy's getting. No, Amy's getting less. I'm, I'm getting more, but I'm only, you know, like I said, I'm only in there. Yeah. Know, yeah, and I think we'd have to dig deeper into that um, to see what that person actually does at Underhill, whether or not they're basically a bookkeeper or an accountant as opposed to doing grant management, which is a different set of skills. Right. Yeah. Right. But like if you put more money into like a financial manager doing the position, you're you would hire them so they would be under your control and yeah. then be um, 
the treasurer would have to live locally, but they would more or less be in signing checks and hopefully have some kind of background or whatever, um, you know, to know what they were signing. Right. I mean, that's that's important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having a municipal accounting background, I think, is going to be pretty important here. Um, okay. Well, I'm I'm certainly willing, Peter, to help any way I can, or, or um, you know, with Dorinda and 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 Sarah, we got on a call, and tried to talk through some of this. That would be great, and come back to us with some kind of a proposal, and then we can tweak it. I, d I just think to try to have all of us all of us here staring at a column of numbers and juggling parts around isn't going to be very efficient. Probably not. I, I'm happy. All right, everybody. Liz, Steve. I, I was going to say I'm happy to, to volunteer too, but it sounds like Phil has more background than I do. No, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with that. The, the only I, thing I wanted to say about the 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 um, administration wages is, is that I want to make sure that if we do get that planning grant for a capital budget, that it's going to require some extra time that we need to compensate Dorinda and Sarah for. I'm not sure how to do that. Like Dorinda, you can increase hours, but like Sarah, I don't know if you can do a, you know, some sort of stipend or bonus or something like that. I mean, it's going to take work and it's going to be time. Right. The problem is, is I'm only committed. I can only work so many hours. And that was under the understanding when I came on board, I've got four other accounting jobs I do. And what? yes. So, this is retirement, huh, Dorinda? <laughs> so, you know, so I'm not complaining about the out number of hours I work. I just think that, you know, I feel it's important that the person sitting in that chair has a good municipal background and understands what's going on because yeah. these grants are very time consuming. Yeah, and just to chime in on that, you know, when I when I took this job, the deal was there was 32 hours a week, which has been a joke, but I've also got another career on the side because to be quite frank, this is not a living wage. I mean, so right. you know, I'm grateful for everything, but I also have a, I also write books on the side and a couple of bucks from the planning grant is not going to help that I have to really, really be careful about managing my time. On the other hand, I can do get grant stuff done during the day when I'm here. Um, I've got you. You've got a grant that you've got to consider right now that apparently makes me the person who's got to file quarterly reports and do all sorts of things. I just got a call today from FEMA, basically begging me to keep doing that grant. That this makes all the other grants look like peanuts. So, I mean, you know, time when you're 58 years old, time is more important than right right now any extra money. Yeah, good point. And those are the kinds of things that that should be able to fall to this new position if we define it the right way, I think. I think it would help tremendously. Yeah. Okay. So Sarah or Dorinda, do one of you want to try to pull together a Zoom call or sometime later in the week or next yeah. week we can chat? Yeah. How about Tuesday? We can we can figure it out. Yeah, I think Tuesday's probably fine. Tuesday's okay. Okay, thank you guys. So anything else on the budget right now, anybody? Budget committee? Can I get the final figure again um, that you had with all those figures we put in? Well, it's far from final, but well, it's, in it's uh, one thousand one million three hundred something, and that's where I lost you. Yeah, let me go back. Um, I've got it here. Hold on. Do you? Well, if I can get to the right page here. One million three hundred and twenty-two thousand and seventy-five dollars. Great. Thanks very much. I know it, but I I like to put these the more recent one on top of the other one so I can go right. back and. I know. Hey, 
Dorinda, do you mind if it's not too much trouble the next time that you send us this to put the headers on each page? I like to see the. Yeah, the problem is converting it because it's in a five page. I'll do what I can because I had to convert it to a PDF and then it just, right. I lost because the numbers for all the wages and things, it's it's calculated from another sheet. I know. Okay. Yeah. And you lose all that formatting when you do it. Yeah. So, but anyways. What I'm and learning the other thing is, is print the thing out and put the numbers on the pages before I even look at it. So I can. Yeah. 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 I like to save yeah. trees, Peter. I'm sorry, what? I like to save trees and look at it on my computer screen. <laughs> I can't do that. I need to go from page to page. I'm sorry. Me too. And I, I can't I can't I can't have that many things going on, like the computer in front of me and the iPad to talk to you guys. I can't do that. And the other I thing be retrained list, but I don't think you have the time. Talk about <laughs> teaching an old dog new tricks. I might be in trouble. <laughs> Anyway. And the other thing that, you know, that we were talking about tonight that we're going to appoint an E911 coordinator. Now that used to be Marika who did most of that during her clerk as this assistant position. So that's another unbudgeted item unless, you oh, know, that's why, it's that's why I was going to try to get either uh, Kevin or because Mitch does it now. Ever since Marek has left, he's been doing it. So that's folded in. Or else get Dave to do it while he's there. It's more, normally been something that has been, it has to be appointed by the select board, but normally we've worked it into their their normal hours. They're the regular hours. Okay. That was something I just wondered about. If it was going to be somebody different, we needed. So we are going to have to plug in some money for a road commissioner too, don't forget. Right, right. Well, I do have the I do have in there the placeholder for Paul, so that is kind of calculated in the wages. But I know that Steve was looking at as far as the road crew doing it different than. So that's a whole. I think salaries in itself is going to be a whole discussion. I agree. I agree. When do you think we should have that at the next meeting, then, um, Dorinda? Well, that's. Not my call. I'm only here to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I, I, you know, I think that's a bigger discussion that we need to have separate from the final review of the budget before we approve it. So, uh, I think if we can get some kind of a guesstimated, estimated number moving the parts around of our of our personnel and what we need to do. Um, I think we should take it up at our next meeting and see how far we get. I mean, I think we could work on this from now until March and not not get to the end of this if we're not careful. And we can't do that, obviously. So we can certainly we can certainly fine tune the moving parts as we go along and we when we see who we can who we can snare in our net. But I just I just don't want to put some number out there for the budget that's unrealistic and we end up completely blowing the number away because we have no choice. We may we may end up doing that anyway. I mean, all we can do is the best we can do, right? I'm wondering if you come up with some kind of job description of what you want for this position and then just throw it out there as an ad and see what you get for response and then build from it. Yeah. But the, other, the other part of it, which is, which is, you know, does that mean does that mean we still also have a bookkeeper or is this person doing the bookkeeping and the financial, you know? They would both. do it all, you know, other than the statutory requirements, you know, you would still need the, um, you still would need your treasurer. Correct. And I don't think you want to make a bookkeeper and the treasurer the same person. I think you want to keep them separate. Oh. And is Amy giving up the, the bookkeeping job and she's only keeping her other job? Yes, she's going to stay on until um, she's willing to stay on until the end of the fiscal year. And then. Um, you What's know. the other job she does? I can't remember what else. She's a she lifter. She's a lifter. Right, of course. She just was here today talking about it. Okay, so I would say. Uh, that concludes our budget discussion for this evening, unless somebody has something else.
Thank you, Budget Committee. You've been very peaceful and quiet this evening. <laughs> Listening People carefully, really thank well. you. They're going to write a blistering report and blow our budget right out of the water. Who knows? They've always, they've always been very kind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I think we're okay. Good night. Thanks. Well, good, good night. Day. Thank you. Well, I know it's all right. Thank you. All us, and I appreciate your involvement. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Bye. Hi. Steve, quick highway report. Yeah, um, we're still doing a few little minor things, uh, getting ready for our winter stuff. We got a few uh, blades to change or cutting edges to change on the, on the plows and stuff. Uh, that's pretty much done. Uh, one comment that I would make is that the way this weather has been, our roads are starting to get a little potholes and we really got to try to pick a time to get out there and grade hopefully we can get out there and do a little spot grading over the next uh, week here some different times we just got to be careful when we do it so that it just doesn't turn to mud you did it oh, today on culver hill what's that you did it today on culver hill you graded yeah and then it rained and, and then it rained. It, rained. Look at it, all rained. The times, Liz. it actually <laughs> hailed and then it rained. <laughs> we do that especially for you, Liz. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, have they looked at the weather forecast? It's a 60% chance of rain. <laughs> that was supposed to be good. So, guys, Steve, give them the good news about our chain table. We got a little okay. good news. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we we were trying to either have somebody manufacture or or uh, build a, a table to repair our chains on, so the guys don't have to bend over doing it on the floor. Uh, right, right. right on the backs. Anyway, they found a table. Um, they went and got it today. Paid three hundred bucks for it. Oh. It's a, a great metal table and perfect for them. So they're happy. I'm happy. So, we have, didn't we have four or five thousand dollars in your budget for that? It, no. We I did put a number in there. I did put a number in there. I don't remember. I don't have that right in front of me, but yes. Well, it's so we can eliminate that. It's a great. It's a great table. So there's a little financial good news. We don't always get financial good news. Right. Rarely, if. Okay. Thank you. Hey guys, what is our meeting for December? I'm sorry, are, is it regular? Our regular meetings? Well, one of them is today because it's December first. Right. So it's and two weeks from tonight, whatever day. Yeah, the fifteenth. The fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. That keeps it away from the holiday. Yeah. Dorinda, anything else from you, or have you blown your? Um, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, again, it. I still have not heard anything about the grant that um, for that, so we can we get our money back from um, for what we paid to Du Bois and King. So I don't know who's writing the report and who's drawing, but I ain't got nothing. Huh? I said, Steve and I talked about that this morning, early this morning. And no, are we talking the same grant? We're probably, we've got a couple of grants that we're no, going to talk. $80,000. No. Okay, that's a different one. That's okay. a different thing. Dorinda and I will spend a little time on that at some point here in the near future, but. Right. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you ever talk to Paul or did he have any? Information. I, I did talk to Paul, and I'm going to probably take that folder and jog his memory a little bit with that okay. folder you left in the in the highway folder. Okay. No, the one I'm talking about is the one for the sidewalk and village path and all of that, where nobody's drawn down the third portion of it. Yeah. And I've asked like every single meeting for the last three or four meetings, so here I am asking again. I thought Sandy said she would do it. No? I don't know. 
So I emailed Mitch and he never responded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I can call is... him though. I think I have his number and ask him if he's done like his, um, well, I shouldn't say I haven't heard from him. I should check. Sometimes I don't check my email every day. So okay. is Mitch like resigning most of the things he does and just focusing on rec? On the rec department? Yes. Still going to be on the, what else is he's he on? Zoning. Planning. Planning commission, yeah. Planning commission, but he's not going to be the zoning administrator and he's not going to be the E911 person. No. So he still has planning commission and rec, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he never responded to me. I did, I said this way back in, um, no, Tuesday, November 10th. <laughs> yeah. And the, the other thing is, is like we got, Sarah got a letter that we were awarded a $24,000 grant for, I don't know what it was for. I think it's for the second part of the sidewalk thing, which is probably, I think, coming up down here. But it's, I mean, we don't even have a copy of the original grant that was ever, and there's a discrepancy like, um, Sandy Levine said it's for $30,000 and we're going to get 24,000. So we have to pay 6,000. We thought we got 24,000 and that the 20% would be 4,800. So again, these are the things that I talked about, even after we talked about it, it's still, I did email Sandy and she sent me a link. She said it was too big to print. So she sent me a link if I wanted to go on and download it. But I mean, we really need to get people to start sending the financial department records because this is crazy. Well, that's all part of what we've been talking about. Okay, that's my complaints for the night. I sent you uh, the uh, a new budget report, so. We're yep. looking good. We have another school payment that will be coming out in your next warrant. It's another 830 some thousand, I believe. So, but we got money. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So quickly here, we've got uh, approval of our minutes from November 17th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Approval of an access permit for Chris and Kelly Tarot at 253 Culver Hill Road. This is the one we talked about, Steve, right? For this um, one. I don't know if I talked about this one with you or not. No, so I looked at it. Talked about. We talked about the Sunny Brook thing, which is yeah, that's a different subject. Yep. Okay. So, do we have? Has somebody signed off on this? Did Paul sign off on it? Have you signed off on it? Steve signed okay. off. On it. Go ahead, Sarah. I'm sorry. Steve signed off on it, and it is for uh, 253 Culver Hill Road, on the west side of the highway of the of the road. Yep. It's about one mile from the intersection to Route 12. And what is it, a house? Sorry, driveway? Yeah, you know, it's across, it's that whole, all that land. I know, where I see them doing something. I've, I've seen something that's sold. No, you know? no, it's not for a house. It's just another access onto their property where he can store his uh, oh. camper and stuff. So it's just another access onto the highway. It's just okay. past the peas farm. Okay, stay inside. No. Yes. Same side as the Peace Farm? Yes. West side. I don't know. I, I just, I know where the Peace Farm is. And if it's on the same side, I got that. I don't know what East and West is over there. So the, the thing is that you guys, if you sign it, Steve, um, we need, you, you either need to authorize me to sign it or else Peter needs to come in and sign it. I don't mind coming in to sign it. Okay, I'll leave it out there for you. Okay, thank you. Orders, Dorinda, you got enough responses on the orders? Uh, before the meeting, I think I had two. So, um, I didn't get a chance I, to look at 
I did it. I did it in an email and not on my phone. So. Okay, so maybe there could be three there by now. So. Okay, so take, okay. take a look at them if you if you haven't already. Okay. Hey, one other quick thing I wanted to mention: we met with Eric Mativia for the fire department on Monday. We had a really good meeting with him, and I think he's going to be very refreshing as far as you know. Um, he's got he's well organized and all of that. So. But he wanted to know the budget came up and he was asking me if he had to come back to present his budget again, because that's what was asked of him when he presented the budget the first time. I told him that I had all these numbers and I was passing them on to you and I didn't think it was really necessary, but I want, I told him I would check on that. Well, you're, you're comfortable with the numbers that make sense to you? Well, they're the number, they're, they're their budget numbers. You know, the only thing we don't have yet is the dispatch number. Right. right. But, you know, they're their budget numbers. So it's not a matter of me being comfortable. It's what their numbers are. It was just, he was given a spreadsheet to use, which he assumed was calculated correctly, which it wasn't. And that's what right. happened there. Okay. Is it what is it in your budget now? What he had given yeah. us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need. I don't think we need to see him again unless, okay. I, you know, if, if we're going to do, the challenge is when we get to finalizing the budget in January, if we're going to if we're going to propose major cuts to any of these budgets, I think we we owe these people a heads up and say you might want to zoom into the meeting because your budget is on the chopping block. You know. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, but other than that, I don't think we need to, uh, Sam. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I told my dad. Dorinda, okay. would you send me his email? Because there is this grant that, that I keep looking at, waiting for it to be released. And it's supposed sure. to be released. And I just don't have his email. I don't even know his, how to spell his name. So Okay, no problem. I'll send it to you when we get done. Thanks. Yep. Correspondent, Sarah? Only from the watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I received I received letters yesterday asking, um, and I, I round filed them, and maybe that was the wrong thing to do, but uh, asking if I would if I could present to the select board the opportunity to be to receive uh, copies of the Rock Towers a regular basis. So that was mailed. That was the correspondence I got for the select board this week. No, we're good without the Watchtower. Thank yes. you. That's what I expected, but that's the only correspondence. I got I got cornered by those guys. I was working under my truck one day. This was about three years ago, and they surrounded me. I was trapped under my truck. <laughs> Great. Um, the, uh, we did have we did have the thing that I did pass on to you uh, from a request for uh, an uh, easement onto. Uh, We've got a weird person trying to join in, Jay Nummy. Oh, that's that's good that he's here. He's actually I was just that John. Oh, John, that's that, okay. I he just wanted to make sure I come in that John Nummy. He is the one Peter that uh, what is buying the land over on Lower Sunnybrook. So I'm gonna in other business. I'm gonna bring that subject up. That's why he's on there. Okay. okay. Well, do we want to do we want to quickly deal with that before we deal with the uh, V Trans grant? Might as well. If he's here, that's fine. Okay, so well, let me get his his stuff. So anyway, this is the one where the lawyer had sent us uh, an easement deed. For him to be able to uh, go on to the, I don't really understand the easement thing and why we need it. I think Sarah had sent that to our lawyer with a copy of our uh, class four and trail road policy. But I've read that and there's no need for that. I've talked to John uh, earlier this evening and I told him I didn't see any reason for uh, an easement. Uh, we've never done that before. It clearly states in there um, that if he wants to do any maintenance to the trail, that he has to get written 
get written permission from from the road uh, commissioner, which is me, and I told him I, we've gone over everything. So he is writing up a letter uh, requesting. A, I asked him to send it to Sarah, though, so it would go through the town. So it's a matter of record. And and then it, when he gets done his uh, maintenance uh, section, then then I inspect it. But that's clearly in the things. And then the only other thing he has to do is apply for a uh, access permit like anybody else would do to get onto his property. So he has a trail and he wants to upgrade well, it to look, a our trail. At Lower Sunnybrook Road, uh, where we stop there, that yeah. from there on, it's a trail. The piece of property that John is is going to be closing on shortly, uh, I think it's the 11th, but the piece of property is a, approximately 375 feet up that trail, and it needs quite a bit of work. I mean, it's hard to walk on, let alone you can't get a vehicle in there. So he, I walked the thing, Paul had walked it, I've walked it twice. Paul walked it with me once. We've looked at it, talked with John, um, you know, so anyway, he is going to, what he is planning on doing is making that section of road passable, culverts, what he needs for culverts and making it passable uh, for vehicular traffic. But it's, it's uh, so he's upgrading a, a portion of that road just, just for his own uh, use to get onto his property, but it's still a trail. Gotcha. Still be a town trail. Pardon? And it would still remain a town trail. Yes. We're not upgrading the road from trail to class four. It's a trail. Okay, that was right. what was. It just remains the trail. That's the way it is. It remains the trail. It's it, He's able to get to the piece of property he's going to be closing on. And, and uh, you know, it'll be safe for, for emergency vehicles or whatever. But So, um... Uh, what did his lawyer want an easement for? Um, well, I don't. Uh, I... Rob never got back to us on that. Okay. Well, I read that. I read that easement over. It made no sense to me. No, it makes no sense to me, and that's what I told John. I, I don't. I, I don't know why we need an easement, and I don't think we do. So I, I've I've uh, instructed John to just go ahead send his letter requesting, you know, to upgrade that road. And, uh, and I've already gone over everything with him. I'll, I'll send him back the, the written correspondence uh, and let him do his thing. We don't need the easement. We've that, never done an easement. Okay, so it doesn't matter what it says because we're not gonna sign it anyway. We're right. not gonna sign it anyway. Okay, gotcha. Okay, now, has everybody had a fresh cup of coffee? You've got your wits about you, everyone? We have to deal with this uh, VTrans project commitment for the bike ped scoping study, 20% town match action possible. So I did get the copy that I guess Sandy sent out of the, of the grant application. Right. And what it clearly shows is, which we discovered and Dorinda alluded to, this is not what we thought it was, a $24,000 grant where we were responsible for $20,000, excuse me, we were responsible for $4,800. It, it is a $30,000 grant, and we are expected to provide 20% of that, which is $6,000, and then in another little line, it says we're required to provide $3,000 of administrative services. So that's $9,000. And we have been for the past, I don't know how long it's been, but quite a while, tiptoeing down the, down the path of sidewalks in the village. This is a, this is more of a, more of a tip, not a tiptoe. This is a, this is a gigantic jump. And my only concern on this is, and my, my real underlying concern, and I've been 
nothing but thinking about this. I was awake half the night last night thinking about it. Is I don't think I'm ready to support sidewalks in the village. So if I'm not ready to support sidewalks in the village, why would I support this grant, which is going to cost the town nine thousand um, dollars? I just I don't know. That's that's where I am. I don't know where I don't know where everybody else is, but I don't know. Sarah, does this does this have to be signed tonight, or it's dead? Can we delay this? Can we table it? Can we? Uh, it just says within two months of receiving the fully executed grant agreement from VTrans. Right. Oh, this right. is so. There's nothing. This is the fully exec executed grant uh, agreement. Um, I don't know. This is, came from Sandy. I don't. I'm that three thousand dollars of administrative services. I mean, you know. Uh, how much is that? That's how, that's like, a, what is that? A, a month of two, two and a half months of my take home pay or something. I mean, that's just, what are, what are they expecting here from the town? I'm not sure that well, we, I'm afraid what they're expecting is all that work, which drives you crazy and which you don't have the time to do. Now if we have like our new financial person. That's exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Yes, dear. Yeah. So I've got two things. I pretty much feel like you do. I, I don't think we're ready for sidewalks in the town of Middlesex. I, I'm at that at that meeting. I mentioned that that this road could have a bike path and they could walk on the bike path. That, and I still stand by that. Uh, and but my second point <laughs> is this is a second grant. And we and Dorinda alluded to it just a little bit ago. We don't even have the information on the first one. Why are we even thinking of entering into another grant when we can't even get the first one taken care of? Hmm. That's my position. I just say absolutely not until we can get stuff squared away. Um, so my only sort of concern is that when Sandy wrote this grant, um, she got our blessing to write the grant, I believe. <laughs> and so when they award this money, they're taking money away from someone else who didn't get the grant. And so if we just decide suddenly that we don't like the terms of the grant, I'm not sure that's a great uh, precedent to set for future grants for projects. Um, to turn this down. I mean, I, I, I get where you guys are coming from, but she Point, didn't well, come and meet with us and talk with us about applying for this grant. Yeah. You're right about that, Liz, and that's point well taken. However, at that point when we agreed to that, when she wrote for that grant, we weren't having all these problems. We just, how do we get the information? We just going to enter into another one and it just keeps going and then we're putting more work on people that we don't have to do that work. We need to handle this differently. And I say that I don't know that it needs to be signed tonight. I think we need to delay this a little bit anyway. Yeah, I think so too. I, um, I remember the 20% match. I don't recall another 3000 in administrative um, contribution. Right. And I think to follow on what, what Steve is saying that I'm not sure we have the capacity to do that right now. Um, you know, we're looking at restructuring our financial office. We're looking at how we handle grants. Um, we, you know, we're going to have to, or we have just replaced our road foreman. We've got to deal with a road commissioner's position. Um, so I, I think we're a little short on, on a lot of different kinds of resources. So, you know, I would rather try to defer at least for a while, not to say we couldn't come back and look at this again, but I, I'm just feeling like right now is not the time to do it. Well, we don't know what the deadline is either, do we? Let me just go get the a binder. I'll be right back. Okay. I agree that we should delay it because I don't think it's fair to Sandy that we gave her the blessings to apply for it. And then we're gonna just say, we're not gonna go ahead without giving her a chance to make an argument on why we shouldn't go ahead. And maybe the argument is simply, 
a majority of the board doesn't think we want sidewalks, or maybe that's because they're three thousand dollars worth of administrative costs we didn't know about and we're not prepared for it. But at a minimum, I think she ought to know that those are the concerns, yeah. and she ought to be able to address them. So, and, and I don't think the fact that the majority of the board, whether or not we do it, which we haven't actually said, do we like sidewalks or not? I don't think that's a part of this conversation that doesn't weigh into whether or not we have you know now been awarded this grant that we gave a blessing to and now we're like well I don't think I want sidewalks anyway that's just that, that's not a good response um so and and I also think that there may be some clarity on that three thousand dollars administrative stuff it could be that it's the planning commission's you know that's the three thousand dollars and it's an in-kind thing or something that's worth three thousand dollars so i think that we need to get clarity on that well, I, I, think, think I also think i think that, that is what it is liz i think that is what it is is that's just that's just the work that sarah or somebody from the town has to do and they're just putting in a plug number to show us that I mean, right and i think I, that it's, I, agree, I think it's their responsibility though to do the reports like they, there's the ones who i don't think it's sarah's responsibility to be doing just like it's wouldn't be Sarah's responsibility to be doing a report for the fire department. I think that if, you know, it's it's what what's happening right is that's not happening right now with 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 Mitch not filling out the report, that's the administrative stuff I think that isn't getting done. And yeah. so and that's the value there's a value to that, right? And so I think that, you know, we need to say to Sandy, Sandy, before we sign this, we need to draw down the last of that money so that we can proceed. So that's putting that that's that's putting a fire under her to say somebody has to finish that report, or we're not signing this grant. I mean, I, well, but the point I'm, is, I'm not be sure I'm gonna I'm gonna support sign. I mean, what I'm what I'm struggling with is, and I hear what you say about we've we've kind of done a bad thing because we got talked into this. We said we would support it. We went along with the first grant. I mean, we've been we've been hippity hopping down the down the trail here. But I just, I, I, the more I've thought about it, this, the more, the more I've just thought that the idea that by putting sidewalks in the village, all of a sudden, the village of Middlesex is going to look like Woodstock is, uh, is, is just way over the top. And, and, you know, I, I drive through, I drive through Moortown all the time. And, and Sarah and I were talking about this quickly the other day you know yeah they put in those sidewalks but they've got their school there they've they've got a store connected they've got a church they've got you know, they've got a lot more of a village than we're than we're ever gonna have and plus they had at least some kind of sidewalk there before they had it was more like a dirt path but it was a sidewalk and i i i kind of like Steve's idea. I think having the idea of, of making it safe to walk, but not having a sidewalk that has to be separately plowed. I mean, that, you know, there's going to be ongoing expenses for the rest of our lives paying for the maintenance of this thing if we build it. It isn't just building it. And I can also promise you if we get a grant to build it, there's probably going to be a 20% match and that's going to be a whopper of a 20% match. You know, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially. I don't know. A lot. I, I just, I, I really come around, and maybe I, maybe Sandy can, can twist me around again. But you know, the idea that that creating the sidewalk is going to all of a sudden bring economic prosperity to the village, and there are going to be people running around and walking around and buying stuff and doing stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I think that the economic development that's occurred is because of. Uh, our friend who lives in Moortown and his partners. Well, you know, the other thing I was going to say is, and don't get me wrong, Planetary Matters is doing a lot of good stuff for our village, but it's really them who started this whole sidewalk business. And, you know, I know they'd like to have a sidewalk. Well, maybe they should put in the sidewalk. I don't know. Well, I don't I, know. This, I kind of feel that way, too. <laughs> well. Liz had a good point, though, that we we all did agree to have Sandy write for this grant. So Liz is right on that thing. And looking at this thing, this scoping project, I, they had said this is kind of their next step to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we have to accept any sidewalks or anything. Right. We, oh, must, no. we should have a lot of say in that coming down the road. 
Oh no, I agree. I agree with that, Steve. It's just a question of spending thirty thousand dollars for something that we're not convinced we want to do. That's that's yeah. what I struggle with. But well, anyway, let's let's. I think we at the very least we need to have another discussion, another frank discussion with uh, Sandy, and she was here earlier, and I guess she had to go. So I say we I say we table it for tonight, and I think we all need to be thinking about this. And I, and I agree, Liz, at a, at a bare minimum, we should say we're not going to sign any new grants until we get the old grant squared away and draw down the money. Because we've spent that money. We paid those bills, right, Dorinda? We need to get reimbursed. Yeah, she's nodding her head. Yes. So do you want me to put this on for the December 15th meeting? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And invite Sandy. Invite Sandy. Okay. Well, and maybe we invite, do we invite the, uh, somebody from Planetary Matters as well? I don't know. I, I need to be convinced that this is going to be a benefit to the town and a worthwhile thing, and I'm not convinced now. Well. Can I ask a question? At what point would the town's peoples get involved as far as if we're going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on sidewalks? Yeah. We're not. No, no, no. Like, the, I mean, we, we are going to get involved, but like, we would never, that it would never, and the only reason I know this is because I've read about other stuff, but it's, you would, the town would never be put on a, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It would be done through giant grants. So there would be a match, you know, that the town would have to come up with. Um, and sometimes matches are done through like not even the town, like maybe through fundraising, right? Like, I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's different ways that right. it's done, but like the okay. town would not be put, put spending a million dollars on sidewalks. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just, the only way I came up with that money is just thinking 20% of a million dollars, which was a figure somebody threw out for the cost of the sidewalks would be 200,000. I don't know what it would be and how it would work. Yeah. But I mean, the idea behind the sidewalks is also, it's an economic development idea, right? It's to get people to come to your town. So yep. I think that that's really the, the selling point that we need, we as citizens need to be educated on. And that that it, if this, this ever happens, the buy-in has to be that there's a return on investment for these sidewalks. And it's not just that the people of Middlesex get to walk from Red Hen Bakery to the town clerk to the roots thing, right? It's that it brings people in and has them spending money and brings in more businesses who want to do business with us. That's that's the idea. Build it, build it and they will come, as they say. But See, I, I, I just have to go back. When if you read this, I just don't I, I mean I can I can do this, I guess as town clerk and a select board assistant, but I mean, you know, I have to Within two months of receiving this grant, we will begin the procurement process. process. Uh, I've got to send out RFPs. Uh, right. You know, it's it's really it's not it's not something it's not something just like you know should we plant flowers? I mean, this is a big big project. This is a huge project, and I don't think yeah. the board understood that. I'm not sure I understood that as a town clerk uh, that this was going to be when when Sandy proposed this grant. That was not, there was no understanding that this was going to be this, this amount of work. But well, that's what I think we need, I'm I think sorry? we need to tell Sandy that. I mean, well, isn't that their job to do the bidding and the RFPs and all that? You know, I mailed, I, I mail things for the planning commission now. So I, I send out letters and certified letters. If they can't do that, I can't imagine them doing this. Well, they're, they're going to have to do some of this stuff. I mean, and I think we put this on for, for the 15th and, and have Sandy there. And I think that's, you know, and, and maybe Everyone. we sign this thing, but, it, but I don't think it's going to have your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you should share your concerns when Sandy comes in, Sarah. I will. Fun goes on and on. <laughs> I just, I just, I just am stuck about this, and I, and I, I do feel badly because I know we agreed to do this, and uh, yeah. 
but I think we're entitled oh, to safe over. Okay, oh. everybody, anything else? Any other business for tonight? Nope. No. Okay. Sleep no. tight. The temperature's dropping. Fire up the wood stoves. <laughs> is tomorrow going to be cold? Be below freezing, which, which is what it should be this time of year, but. Out of 60. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're supposed to open tomorrow. I went for a bike ride today in December. <laughs> <laughs> My first ever December bike ride. You did that just so you could say you did it, yes. right? I yeah. almost mowed the lawn too, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Rind up a few more leaves. There was, there was there was the year when my son Matthew was at Dartmouth, and he vowed he was going to kayak every week of every month of the year for fifty-two weeks, and he did. He would send us wow. pictures of sliding down icy waterfalls and ski hills and everything under the sun in his kayak. Wow. Remember the Christmas Eve we had like four years ago or five years ago that was 70 degrees? We were playing soccer. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. I'm going to have to move to Alaska. I need snow. Come on, snow. <laughs> good night, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye. 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 Sarah, Bye. Sign that thing. Liz, can you hang in for a minute? Just a sec. Yes. I'll call up Sean and get a time that we can do we want to talk with him in person or do we just want to talk with him? Uh, we can talk with him. And it's Shane. It's not Sean. You keep I saying know, I know. I keep saying that. I'm sorry. I know it's Shane. Yeah. When, you, when you guys, when you decide on a number, when he let me know so I can plug it into the budget. We know Dorinda. And Dorinda, I have a little, um, I don't know if you, you keep this stuff, but I have a little notes that I took from his um, uh, interview. Well, his interview, but also his, uh, the, whatever that thing is called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his resume. Non, his non-resume. No, not non his resume. It, when, when you do a, um, why am I, you know, when you ask someone their opinion about the person. Oh, okay. The, the references. The references. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm like, what the heck? Word? I'm really tired. This is like my 10th Zoom call today. I can't uh. take this. And I, I slept three hours last night, everyone. So did Peter. Peter and I didn't sleep last night. There you go. Great. All right, guys. Have a good night. Okay, bye. Bye.